Thank you for clicking on this video. The making of gunpowder or any explosive is extremely dangerous. I'm not suggesting for one moment that you go out and you buy from Amazon or from eBay the ingredients, make up a ton of gunpowder and blow yourself to smithereens. If you feel that you really must make the gunpowder, not blow yourself to smithereens, and you don't have the equipment nor the expertise, please find someone that does. Anyhow, please remember to subscribe to the Geek Nick Science YouTube channel. I hope you enjoyed the video. Welcome back. This is something I've been wanting to do for some time now, and that's make gunpowder. But make gunpowder from ingredients bought online. Next day delivery from Amazon or from eBay. But I want to go further and do something I don't think anyone has done on the internet at all. That is make four different types of gunpowder and then pitch them head to head in a battle royal. The first part of the battle will be our homemade cannon. The second part will be laying them across the bench here in a head-to-head -head race. And we will find out which of the four is the best. saltpeter, that's potassium nitrate, 15% charcoal and 10% brimstone, that's sulfur. Here's what we got online, they don't come in these fancy glass jars, they come in simple plastic packaging. This is the saltpeter, it says on here that this is used for curing meats and to give the characteristic pink colour to bacon and hams. This is the brimstone, the sulfur. It's an insecticide. We're going to be using two different types of charcoal. This is willow charcoal. And these are ordinary charcoal briquettes used for your barbecue. Let me clear away all of this. Let's get cracking. I'll see you in a moment. We are just about ready. The four gunpowders that we're going to be making are firstly a coarse black powder. Secondly, we're going to be grinding the potassium nitrate and that'll make a serpentine powder. Thirdly, we're going to grind it even more by using a milling machine to make a really fine powder for real intimate mixing. And then finally, we're going to be taking the milled black powder and we're going to be corning it to make a corned powder. Now, we want about 50 grams of each of the gunpowders. A couple of grams to do a quick test to make sure everything is okay. Seven and a half grams to put in our cannon and 15 grams to use in the race. Our recipe means that we're going to need 37 and a half grams of saltpeter, seven and a half grams of charcoal, and five grams of brimstone of sulfur. Okay, let's make the first one. First one, the coarse black powder. I'm going to take one of our charcoal briquettes, pump it in the water, is a good crushing. Actually not too bad to crush. Pretty good. Okay. Alright. So now we need to weigh that out. Let's have a look. So we want seven and a half grams. Right, there we go. That'll do. Perfect. There. 
is our charcoal. Next thing that we need is we need some sulfur. We need five grams of sulfur. Let me, there we go. 4.4, 4, 4.8, 4.8, 5.1. 5.01 oh, well, actually, that's pretty good. And now, see what this, we need 37 and a half grams of potassium nitrate. 18. 29, that's brilliant, absolutely brilliant. 37.45, that will do nicely. Now, put those out of the way. We've now got our ingredients. When we mix them, this is where we just be careful. And this is why I'm going to be using these wooden cups. Please don't mix these things if you're in, in glass or in metal or anything which might spark. So what I'm going to do is pop the sulfur in here and then the charcoal. That and here is what we do. Pop those on, a little bit of the tape. Very careful, don't knock the top off. If it doesn't stick to me too much. We can add like that. That's pretty good. And now we can mix. How about that? It's a, it's a maraca. Look, feel that. There we go. And I think so that should be about right. If I can find the end here. There you go. That's the one. Don't worry about that. Okay. Now that looks pretty good. See a little bit down here. What we will do is we will do a quick test in a moment and we will use that little bit. Right, for the quick test. Now, what am I looking for? I am looking for some fuse. So for the quick test we need a little tiny bit of visco fuse, which I have in here. Uh, find the end. There we go, don't need much of it. Just about three or four centimeters. Now, what I'm going to do is use sticky tape and down there, make sure that's sticking up, make sure that's all okay. There's not much gum powder that has spilled there, just move that there. Right, we need to weigh out a couple of grams of the black powder that we just made. I'm going to use a wooden spoon. That's 1.6, a bit more, there we go, I'll do it. 2.2, there, that's absolutely smashing. What I am going to do now, is to pop the rest of the gunpowder well away. Yeah. Go. Into. That's it. Get a sealed container. Get that right out the way. Get these out the way as well. That's good. And this, we're going to need a little bit of a pile here. There we go. That's fine. That's good, get it all out of the way. Okay, so let's get my firing wand ready and the goggles on, and we're going for a test. Here we go, testing. Here we are. Now. Oh! 
Okay, not very dynamic. Lots of sparks, lots of smoke. We can do better, which is exactly what we're gonna do with the next black powders. Let me clear up and I'll be back with the next one. We're now ready to mix our second gunpowder. I've already weighed out seven and a half grams of the willow charcoal. The willow charcoal is a lot finer than I could ever get by grinding the briquette. I think the briquette had quite a lot of clay in there. This hopefully is pure. The sulfur, I've got five grams of sulfur in here. And in this one, I will be putting 37 and a half grams of saltpeter. But first, I want to grind the saltpeter to a powder. The saltpeter comes as small crystals, like table salt, just an awful lot smaller. But I really want it smaller still, as a powder. The idea here is to get a really intimate mix. Right, that looks pretty good. That's pretty well powered, powdered now, smashing. Right now, I need 37 and a half grams in here. Let's see what we've got. 15, that will do 37.6, that's lovely. Right, let's get that well out of the way. And now, we do our old trick, mixing that in there, and then the willow charcoal, and now we are going to seal this like that hopefully there's enough just enough there just enough right that's smashing and now <laughs> back to our mixing again <laughs> right <laughs> we'll be back in the mo <laughs> that should be enough we hope let's see if we can find the end here it's about right okay a bit of spillage there never mind we can collect all that up in a moment, we'll use it as part of our test, of course. There we are. Right, let's get rid of that. And in fact, let's get rid of a few other things as well while we're at it. Oh, that looks pretty good. That looks pretty good. Now, let me get this together here. Right, now, we want to weigh out. Um, I think two and two, two grams of this for our test. Okay, be okay. That's fine. That's our two grams for the test. That's out of the way. Okay, sticky tape and visco fuse. We're all okay. And this is our second gunpowder. Wow, that's quite a bit quicker, quite a bit brighter, not quite so much smoke and not quite so much residue. We're getting closer, we're getting better, but we're still not good enough. So we'll start with the third one very shortly. For our third and fourth gunpowders, we're going to be using the milling machine. We're going to mill them both together in one batch. The milling machine is from Les K, costs about £120 and has a maximum working load of about 1.5 kilograms. The milling balls themselves, they weigh about 1.1 kilograms, meaning that there's about 400 grams that we can use for material that we want to mill. 
I found it best if you use about half that, using a maximum load of about 200 grams. So I've measured out here 150 grams of potassium nitrate, 30 grams of willow charcoal, and 20 grams of sulfur. I'm going to put them all in here and I'm going to mill them. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to be careful how I put them all in. I'm also not going to mill them in here. I'm actually going to do the milling in the shed out at the back which is about 40 or 50 yards away from the actual lab itself just in case we were to get a spark because there could be a well there will be about 200 grams of gunpowder in here which could um, go up with quite a bang if that were to happen i've done this a lot it's not happened yet i suppose it's always a first time so rather be safe than sorry so here's what we're going to do we are going to put the balls in there four lots of balls potassium nitrate in there Charcoal, sulfur, top on, that's that. make sure that's secure, make sure that's good and that will sit nicely in there and we can begin milling. <laughs> Great, that looks really, really fine in there. So I'm going to remove the balls now. Um, the wooden spoon, of course. There we are. And we should be left with the milled powder. It's going to take a little while. I'll be back shortly. I've removed all the milling balls, and now I am taking the milled black powder out it's very fine it's almost it's almost like a dust it is so fine um, but in terms of intimate mixing it surely doesn't get much better than this I've now extracted the um, milled black powder and I'm going to take two grams for the test that we do, just a quick test. So let's see what two grams looks like. 2.3, there we are, 2.04, that's pretty good. Let's put the top on that right out of the way with that, and out of the way with that as well. Don't need that, and now, Do the old trick again. So that's on there. And there we go. Two grams of milled. There we go. Goggles on. Let's give it a test. Wow, now, how much quicker was that than the others that we've seen? A lot brighter, a lot faster, not nearly so much smoke, and hardly any residue at all. If you have a look at some of the other spots around here, you'll see quite a lot of pitting, almost like craters on here. That is extremely clean. That's great. Now, the milled powder that we've just created is very good as we've just seen but it's such a fine powder it's almost like dust it would be unusable on the battlefield trying to fill your musket your cannon with it it would just go over the slightest wind it would be unusable so we need to make this usable the way we do it is to make corned powder the object is to make this into little Corns is the best way you'll see. To do this, we're going to need some isopropyl alcohol, some rubbing alcohol, 
and some Dextrin available on Amazon or eBay next day delivery. I've already prepared myself here about 50 millilitres of the isopropyl alcohol. I'm going to uh, now measure out round about seven grams or so of the dextrin. Got a fine powder this. That's about three. It doesn't need to be exact, about seven will do. There we go. That's good. That's going to act as a bit of a binder. And now I'm going to measure out 50 grams of the recently milled black powder. That will do 49.4. That's great. Now, what else do we need to do this? You'll see, I've got a rolling pin. I've got a glass cooking dish and also a glass bowl here. You probably want to use wood if possible. I'm using glass here, I've done this many times before. It's fine, but to be ultra safe, you probably want to use wood. I'm using glass so that you can see what's going on. I've also got two pieces here of balsa wood. These are two and a half millimetres thick. I've got two sheets of tracing paper and here I've got an eight mesh, that's a two and a half millimetre mesh uh, garden sieve here and that we will actually um, use for the corning itself. So the first thing we're going to do uh, is, and I have, <laughs> A flat surface here, or flattish. Get this right out the way. Don't need that. We're done with that. We're done with that. So we've got this here. Right. So the first thing we're going to do is to put the corned, uh, to put the, um, <laughs> ooh, a bit lively that. Put black powder in there. That's a milled black powder with the dextrin. I'm going to use my hands here, gently just mix them together. There we go. That's fine. And now I'm going to slowly add some isopropyl alcohol. I started off with about 50 millilitres in there. I'd probably put in a good 25 there. The consistency that I'm looking for, you know you can get sort of like Play-Doh. Well, that's the consistency that I want. Play-Doh. Now, let's have a look. Actually, to be honest with you, that's not bad. Maybe a little bit moist, actually. So what I did there looks like just over 25. Let's see how we're getting on here. We might have just got it spot on. First time. Okay, now that's the sort of thing which we're looking for. It's quite like Play-Doh, yeah? So that's what we're looking for. That's great. Okay, just leave that in there just for the moment. That's, okay, pop some of that in there. Okay, right. Sheet. Tracing paper. Just press that out a little bit as round as we can get it. Get that out of the way. A sheet of tracing paper. And, aha, you see, that's how we do it. And now we can roll. Won't take that much to roll it out. Okay, just turn it around. Okay. That's pretty good. I think that's about two and a half millimeters. Smashing. That's good. Yep. 
That is really good. That is. Ah, we turn it over like that. Now, with a bit of persuasion, perhaps even with a wooden spoon, that should really just come straight off. I have seen this done with cling film, I'm just not sure about cling film. I'd hate any sparks to be introduced. So that's why I'm using cellulose and things like that. Okay. Waste not, want not. Go, that's great. And now we simply push the mixture through. When we push it through, you will be amazed at the corns that we end up with. And actually, that's not bad, not bad at all. Let me get myself a wooden implement. A fork will do. Not bad at all. I'm going to leave that now overnight and they'll be ready. We've left this 24 hours it's now really quite dry and that is looking very good indeed you know what it's like they're not as big as corns a little bit smaller it's like freeze-dried coffee i think right let's get this out of here That's great. There we go. Corn to powder there. Goggles on. Our corn to powder. Golly, that, whoa, that was fast. There is almost zero residue and actually very little smoke. Now, we need <laughs> to begin our tests. We need to get the cannon out and then we need to lay our race. Let's get on with that. The first test for our four gun powders is with the homemade cannon. The cannon itself is made from a four inch length of one inch metal tubing. I've drilled a hole about seven or eight millimeters from one end into which we can put the visco fuse. And then that can be followed by the rubber bung in that end there. The gunpowder, of course, will go in there, followed by the actual shot itself. And this I'm using a, um, a, a wine bottle cork. 
I've put some tape around here. This is insulating tape, so it gives a nice snug fit here without being too tight nor too loose. So once that's in, then this can be then uh, rammed home, I suppose, with a, this, I think this is called a rammer or a tamper maybe. But this can be pushed in with the tamper and then we can light the fuse. We're also going to need a file here because um, at the um, after every uh, firing of the can, we're going to have to clean the actual inside. So we're going to use the file and we're going to use the brush. I think we're ready to go. And I think the weather's good for us, at least for the moment, it's not too windy. Give it a go. It's a, it's a bit windy. This is our coarse powder. Use the rammer to ram that home. Hopefully that's okay. We're off. That was a lovely firework and that was about it. I think it went about nine inches. <laughs> Don't even need to measure it. Next up. <laughs> so, between each test, I'm just removing all the debris that's pretty good actually yeah like that that's good good second test ground Disappointing. Again, nine inches, no difference between the ground powder and the coarse powder. We'll continue on. Milled. I think it's a case of the, of the cork getting jammed. <laughs> we have to try this one again and then jam this cork. Oh dear. Right. <laughs> this is uh, milled powder. We're off. Now, that was better. Where did it land? <laughs> did anyone see it? milled powder it's not good in the wind my am I dust everywhere right okay here we go Right, so 
so one about we'll give it the benefit of the doubt about two meters two meters very good fourth and final one corned powder we're off Is that one very good no I've not done this before this is a first time this is 15 grams of our finest corned gunpowder so I've got a fuse at one end and I've got some flash powder that I've made up um, which is a combination of, of magnesium um, and potassium nitrate right let's see <laughs> how it goes I'm standing well back. <laughs> I feel like I'm going to go off screen here. <laughs> As you can probably hear, I had an audience. <laughs> I made a scream. <laughs> Can't be bad. That's pretty good actually. Now, can we do four together? If they're all as quick as that. Really? Your slow-mo one? <laughs> no, they won't. That'll be the fastest one. And the fog is... <laughs> the fog is descending. <laughs> Actually, there's a... Like a yes, yes, there is. Yeah. There is. There is. There's a pause. You know? This is what we've all been waiting for. I don't believe anyone has done anything like this online ever before, and that is to compare the four types of gunpowder that we've been making. On this row here, we've got the coarse gunpowder. Here, the ground gunpowder. Closer to me, here in the third row, then we've got the milled powder, and then the corned powder here. We don't know how this is going to go. We did a very small test before. <laughs> we've got sand at the ready. We've got our um, fire extinguishers. We've got fire blankets. We're all kitted out and ready to go. So let me get rid of this. This is the, I've got so that down here. And on this side, I will have the fire extinguisher ready to go as well. What I need to do just to complete this is just add a bit of flash powder to each one of these at the end of the run so hopefully we can see which one wins a bit more flash powder a bit of fun shall we this flash powder is made up of magnesium powdered magnesium and potassium nitrate in about a 50 50 proportion that I mixed just a bit before. And I think we're nearly ready. Yes, let's have a bit of a big flash. Oh, come on. Can we come here all day? Here we go, let's go. There we are. That's it, just so we can see, hopefully, which one wins. Right, goggles on. Are you ready? Yeah. No? Okay. no? <laughs> Are you ready? No, no. All right, hang on, hang on. Get them close, get them close, get them close, get them close. Ready, three, two, one. No! We're off. I think it's clear. I think it's clear before we 
Before we completely disappear in the mist, I think it is absolutely clear that the um, corn powder and the uh, mill powder are exceptionally good. Um, the other two are a bit slow, so um, that really just backs up everything here. I can't wait to see that on playback. <laughs> That's going to be absolutely fabulous. Oh, look at this. As I say, yes, it is. Quite smoky. The mist, the fog is settling here so from us right from us well we will see you next time bye <laughs> so we've just realized that one didn't go at all which is this one here it was always difficult to light anyway this um, very coarse powder let me just see um, if I can manually light it sometimes it just doesn't want to go at all really struggling isn't it it's not liking that in the least it needs a bit of um i think it needs a bit of help so what we'll do is <laughs> we'll pop a bit of corned powder there just to give it a bit of a boost we'll see what we can do Well, you won't be using that as your gunpowder fuse, will you? <laughs> that is absolutely useless. So, so, what have you got? Um, ordinary, just coarse powder, no good. Um, yeah, ground powder, slow okay. And slow and steady, absolutely. And then, of course, your milled and your corn powder. Can't beat it, can't beat it. Right, smashing. It's clearing anyway, the mist, isn't it? Yes, yes bit of bit of ventilation's yeah. taking care of it. There was an awful lot of smoke in it, to be to be honest. To be fair, brilliant. That actually is great. That's great flashes and stuff. I'm gonna do it again. I'm gonna want to do it again. <laughs> <laughs> When I was editing this video, there were a couple of things that I realised that in the heat of the moment that I'd neglected to mention. The first one was when we were firing the milled powder and the cork seemed to go into orbit. We lost the cork. The reason for that is that explosives work best when they are compacted and contained. I must, out of pure luck, have achieved a good compaction and good containment at that point. As the gases are released, the pressure builds up and builds up until that containment fails. The gunpowder fuse race also had a few issues. We should have used a bit more of the coarse gunpowder because 15 grams over about a 50 centimetre run gives about 10 millimetres width by about two to three millimetres height. That's not enough to sustain the fuse. We probably should have used 30 grams, but that would have given it an unfair advantage. We also had a problem with the flash powders. They seem to go off spontaneously. Next time when we do this, we'll try to shield those flash powders so that doesn't happen. Anyway, thank you for watching. Please subscribe and we'll see you soon.